if your organization uses Salesforce and you like to be able to send ready to sign documents directly from within Salesforce, then this video is for you because I'm gonna go over the three types of integrations that you can set up between DocuSign and Salesforce. The three types are DocuSign for Salesforce, DocGen for Salesforce, which is something that nobody seems to be talking about and it's so powerful, you can create the best, most polished and complex documents with it. So I really recommend you watch the portion of the, of the video that talks about DocGen, super important. And finally, the third one is a custom integration between DocuSign and Salesforce. Overall, setting up an integration between Salesforce and DocuSign is to help you create document with your Salesforce data, send them the signature and track the status of the signature directly from within Salesforce without having to log into DocuSign. And then when the documents are signed, the signed PDFs and the data that your signers might have entered in forms will synchronize back inside of your Salesforce record. And obviously all of this without having to do any manual work like copy paste. But each of those three methods have obviously pros and cons. I'm going over this now. So the first method is called DocuSign for Salesforce. You can map data from one object like an opportunity and that data will be mapped to your DocuSign envelope fields inside of your DocuSign account. That will then generate a PDF, which will then be sent for signature. And this method is very good for simple documents like this NDA. I call this a simple document because there aren't a lot of information that we're trying to merge on this document. We want the account name, the actual business that's going to sign the NDA, the business address as well. And then we just want their name and their signature at the bottom in the signature block nothing complicated. So that first integration, the DocuSign for Salesforce integration, is good when you want to merge data in a single standard Salesforce object, like an opportunity, for example. But the problem with this integration is that you will not be able to create document with data stored in custom objects or in multiple objects. This means that if you want to pull data from other places, you will have to do quite a bit of work around like creating lookup fields and formula fields. And that's actually the case for this seemingly simple NDA. I want to be able to send this NDA from my opportunity record. But before I forget, if we haven't met before, my name is Sofian Saudi. I'm an ex DocuSign software implementation consultant. I used to work at DocuSign, but since 2019, I founded SoluSign, an agency that helps organizations drowning in paperwork, streamline their document workflows. So if you deal with lots of documents, a lot of compliance, lots of signatures, and you can save hundreds of hours by automating the boring things like manual contract creation. But for this, you will first need to map out your workflow, learn how to use DocuSign, set up your templates, and then integrate DocuSign with Salesforce and all the other apps that you use every day. So if you don't want to struggle by doing this on your own, you can book a strategy session using the link just down below. During the call, we'll analyze your process and suggest the best implementation plan for your unique needs. But if you're more of a DIY person and are just getting started with DocuSign, I recommend that you download our free DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet. You can also find it in the link down below. It will help you get started with DocuSign on the right foot. But for now, let's go back to DocuSign for Salesforce. So I want a button here. So the object from which this integration is going to read data from is going to be my opportunity. However, if we look at this document, I want to merge the account name and the account address. The account name is present on my opportunity. We can see it here. However, the account address is not natively showing on the opportunity in Salesforce. So what I had to do was to create a field, a formula field, in order to pull the address from the account object so that this address, the billing address that I want to merge on my document, was then mappable to my DocuSign template field. Since remember, with this integration, uh, we can only map data from one Salesforce, one standard Salesforce object to the DocuSign template. So that's something you need to know. It's very important. The other issue with the standard DocuSign for Salesforce integration is that the Salesforce data that you want to add to your document is not going to merge in line within your document. And that's because the Salesforce data, such as the address in this case, will be inserted in the DocuSign fields that are overlaid on top of the DocuSign 
template. And so this means your document will not look as polished because maybe the font won't be the same type or size or maybe it won't be exactly aligned. So you will not be able to create as polished documents. You will also not be able to have conditional sections of text. For example, you cannot say that you want to hide that specific paragraph here based on a condition. And if your documents contain tables like this proposal, there's no way to dynamically create additional rows based on the number of items that you want to display in that table. There's also no way to conditionally add documents in your envelopes. For example, if your contracts need to contain an additional addendum based on the state the your clients lives in or the product that you're selling, you might want to add an additional document inside of your signature packet. And that will not be possible with the DocuSense for Salesforce integration, where you will end up having to create a different permutation for each bit's possible scenario, which will make template management very complex. But you can still generate documents in one click as long as they are very simple. You can, if someone fills out something in your documents, you can retrieve this inside of your Salesforce uh, fields. You can also capture payments at a time of signing. You can track the signing status of your envelopes inside of Salesforce, and you can store completed documents back inside of your Salesforce records, like your opportunities. All of this can be done with the standard DocuSign for Salesforce integration. Now, the cost of this integration is only $20 per user per month. You only have to pay that fee for the Salesforce users who are going to send the signature requests. But that is only compatible if you have a DocuSign commercial plan that comes with a Salesforce connector. And that starts at two and a half thousand dollars per year. Now, let's look at how to set up DocuSign for Salesforce. You're going to go to the, your Salesforce homepage yeah and then visit the app exchange. And once you're there, you want to look for the DocuSign e-signature for Salesforce with yeah. over 4,000 reviews. Click on get it now and download it. From there, you'll be able to find the DocuSign apps launcher inside your Salesforce account. On the DocuSign page, this is where you'll be able to log in. I'm already logged in, but it's not rocket science. You'll just need your DocuSign credentials and your Salesforce credentials so that DocuSign and Salesforce get authorized together. And once that's done, the first thing that we want to do is to go to our DocuSign envelope templates and then create a new template. I've already got my new template created, so I'm just going to edit the, the existing template. The steps are exactly the same. The first step is give a name to my template, called it NDA, and then I've uploaded my NDA document. So that's just my document that you saw before. I can show it to you now. Once you've uploaded your document and you want to go to your recipients and map your recipients, it's exactly like you would do using the DocuSign web app. In this example, our NDA needs to be signed by two parties. So I've already added two recipients. You add a recipient, clicking on add recipient. And then here you choose how Salesforce is going to find that recipient. And so in my case, I've selected opportunity contact roles because I'm sending this document from an opportunity. And I want to add a filter because maybe we have two contacts in our opportunities. And so you might want to say, well, only give me the primary contact or maybe a contact where the role contains the word decision for decision maker. Once you've done that, you can just click on add and then you'll have your first recipient mapped. And then for the second recipient, the counter signer, whether you want the counter signer to be the actual sender, so the person who's clicking on the button to send the document for signature, or if you want to choose from a list of users inside of your Salesforce org, you can also find that list of user here. And just don't forget to add the action, whether it needs to sign or receives a copy. In my case, it needs to sign for both, and I don't need to change any of that. Now for the email subject, if you want to add some merge fields from your opportunity object, you can just follow this link, which I've linked down in the description of this video, where you can learn how to format your email subject so that it contains any other field that might be really useful uh, if you want to see a reference in the email subject, for example. Same thing for the email message. We're going to go to next. And here is where you add your merge field. You're gonna take data from Salesforce and you're gonna place it inside of DocuSign. So let me just go to the next step and then I'll go back to how you add the merge field. So if I go to this step on the place field, by adding the merge field in the previous step, those merge fields are gonna become available here in your merge field uh, data field list. 
and then you're going to be able to just drag them and drop them on your document. So I'm going to go back one step, add a merge, a new merge field. You simply click on add field. So here I can just choose the field that I want to add to my DocuSign document. So let's just say that we have a field called next step. Then automatically DocuSign gives a name to that field. And so it adds the word up just so that we understand where this field is coming from. We can also allow write back to Salesforce, which means that if this field is editable by our signers, the information that they will enter in the field will be updating that field inside of Salesforce. I'm also going to make the field required and I'm going to click on save. So now this field has been created as a field that I can add to my template. It's not in my template yet. It's just in my list of merge fields that I can place on my document. So we're going to go to the next step and place the fields. And here I'm simply going to look for my up next step field, drag and drop it here on my document. I'm going to delete that field that I've added just earlier. And I'm going to leave this field here, but obviously this is not where we would want to have it. Um, this is just for the purpose of this demo. So in my NDA, I already have added two merge fields. Here we have the account name and the address. And here we also have the account name. And I've also added another field, which I've called right back just to show you how um, entering data will show inside of the opportunity. I'm going to click on save and close. The next option is to tweak how this template will be used. Do I just want my senders to be able to specify the recipient and place the fields and visualize how the document is going to look like before I send out the document? That's the default. That's the one that I like. Or do I just want a quick sense? If I click on this button right away, is it going to send a document for signature? Then we can also select how we want the documents to be saved back inside of Salesforce. And you can also choose how you want to name the document. I'm going to say that I want to combine all documents into one file and the file name will be the email subject. I don't need a certificate of completion, but what I can do is to update another Salesforce field automatically as soon as my envelope is either sent or completed or delivered or voided. So for example, in this case, if the envelope is completed, I want to change the stage of my opportunity to value proposition. And then I'm going to click next. And here I can create a custom button. So the custom button again is this little thing that you can add to your page layout. And so it's already there for me. I've called it send NDA and you can choose on which layout this button is available. I'm going to click on save and finish. So let's just send this NDA. We're going to go to this opportunity right here and you can see the stage is qualification. The field right back is empty and next step is also empty. All right. So you can see that I'm not cheating. I'm going to click on send NDA. I get to review everything, but I don't really have to. I just like to. So as you can see, Andy is going to be receiving this and email is actually not correct. And I've just changed Andy's email to an email that I can receive. So now we can go back and send our NDA for signature. So send NDA. And you see, this is why I think this quick send button is actually not that great because you cannot catch those errors here. Now I can see that I'm actually going to be able to receive that document. We can see that the opportunity name has been merged and then I can click on prepare and send. I can catch errors again before the document gets sent out. So we should have the account name and the account address, which is here as well as the account name. That's perfect. Those two fields are empty because they were empty in the opportunity. As you remember, I'm just going to go ahead and click send. And now I should receive an envelope. Here's the document. So we're going to open it acting as Andy. So next step will be call me. We can see that the account name is read only. The address was actually not made read only. We can see here we have the account name as well. I'm just going to sign as Andy and I'm here going to, I think this is how data writes back. Now, if I go back to Salesforce, I should be able to track the status of this signature that was sent. So if I go back to my opportunity, I can see that I've got one document for signature and that the document status is sent. Then I've also added a button here to view the envelope in DocuSign. The reason for this is that the status here doesn't tell you whether Andy signed the document. It just tells you that the envelope status is still sent. 
but technically the first recipient has signed. So by clicking on view here, I can open my envelope very quickly inside of DocuSign and seeing whether Andy has signed or not. And then yes, that's the case, Andy has signed. So now the envelope should be in my inbox because I'm acting as the counter signer. So let's just sign. And only then after signing, the envelope status inside of Salesforce will change. So we're gonna go back here and hit refresh and we'll see how long it takes. The stage of the opportunity should progress to value proposition and the status should also say sent. And we should also see the signed document getting attached. There you go. As I clicked, you see the stage moved to value proposition automatically. The next step says, call me. That's what I've entered. The write back field contains, this is how data right back. Let's just refresh once more. Now the DocuSign status says completed and we have the document for signature that's here and we can see the signed document completed. And so this is how you set up the DocuSign or Salesforce integration, the standard one. Now we're going to talk about the DocuSign DocGen for Salesforce. With DocGen for Salesforce, you can map data from multiple objects, so opportunity, account, contact, or any other custom object. And then that data will be mapped to a gen template, which is a word-based template. Then that template will generate a document. Then once the document has been generated, you can map a DocuSign envelope template to that document, which will contain the list of recipients who need to sign it and other parameters. And then the envelope will be sent to your recipients for signature. Those are the big differences between DocuSign for Salesforce and DocuSign DocGen for Salesforce. DocGen's purpose is to create more complex documents like I was showing you with this custom proposal. And your documents will also look polished. Polished because your Salesforce data will merge directly inside of your Word document directly. The second reason I really like DocGen is because you can merge data from multiple Salesforce objects and even custom objects. In this proposal here, we are merging data from the opportunity, from the account, as from the opportunity product without having to set up a bunch of lookup and formula fields. So it makes mapping data from Salesforce to the document very simple. DocGen can also show or hide sections of text based on a criteria. So in this custom proposal, we have a table. And so our table will contain the deliverables, the product that our customers are going to buy. And so if X, Y, or Z deliverable is included in our table, we are also adding a section of text, a paragraph that explains what that product is. That'll make more sense when I'll show you how to set it up in a minute, don't worry. And talking about table, we can also have dynamic number of rows. So for example, if in my opportunity, I have five products, then I'm gonna have five rows here. And if I have 10 product, I'm gonna have 10 rows. That wouldn't be the case with the standard DocuSign for Salesforce integration, where you would need to have a standard template with the maximum number of potential rows that you would need. If your customer is based in a certain country, or if you sold a specific product and you want to include an additional document in the envelope, you can also do that with DocuSign DocGen completely automatically. It's also worth mentioning that DocGen can generate documents that don't necessarily need to be signed right away or at all. So for example, if you're a law firm providing company formation services to businesses setting up entities in various jurisdictions, you can use DocGen to create important documents like draft articles of incorporation or shareholders agreements using all the data that you have on your clients that's stored in Salesforce in various places. So just for that, I think DocGen is a very powerful tool to help you streamline the generation of documents that may or may not need to collect signatures. The cost of DocGen is $20 per month on top of the DocuSign for Salesforce integration, on top of the DocuSign subscription itself. But now let's talk about cons because Gen is not perfect. The biggest issue between Gen and non-Gen is that Gen does not support PDF. So this means that if the documents you want to prefill is a PDF file and you want to prefill the form fields in that PDF, like this new account opening form, it will not work. For that, you will have to use the standard DocuSign for Salesforce integration. But if you're trying to map data to that form from different places in Salesforce, 
then you'll get stuck because the standard integration doesn't allow you to map data from more than one custom object. So you'll end up having to create a bunch of lookup fields and formula fields. It'll be a nightmare. And we really don't recommend that you do that. If you need to map data to PDFs coming from different places, then you need to say goodbye to the standard DocuSign integrations to go with a custom integration. The difference between a custom integration and the previous two integrations is that you have full flexibility over what you do, but it's more complex to set up because you're gonna have to use another platform. For those first two integrations to work, you just need the DocuSign subscription, your Salesforce subscription, but for the custom integration, you will need to use third-party software to achieve whatever you want. It'll give you full flexibility, but in terms of setup complexity, that's the highest. So how does DocGen work? So in this document, which we would want our clients to sign before entering an engagement, where we would build templates, integrations, and training, and all of the DocuSign related things, we want to pull today's date, the account name, the opportunity name, the project overview, and then in the deliverable section, we want to have each product with the quantity, the unit price, and the total price for each line item as well as the overall opportunity total price and again this is a demo document i haven't spent a lot of time trying to format it so as you can see the trailing zeros are not properly displayed but that doesn't matter and so what is specific about this table is that if we were selling 10 products we want 10 rows and we want each row to be created automatically we also want to have a description of each product that was added in our table above to be displayed here. And so this is how Gen helps. It helps with creating conditional sections, conditional rows, conditional paragraphs, and we can pull data from multiple sources. For example, adding this product, quantity and save. Now, if I generate my proposal using DocGen, and I will show you in a minute how we set it up, we can see that we have a fourth product added. The total was calculated as well. And we also have an additional line item for our, in our description table. Now let's see how to set this up inside of DocuSign and Salesforce. So the very first step is to create our Word document template where you will add all your static text. It doesn't matter whether you play with formatting now or later, but if you do need to add tables, I recommend you start creating your tables right away. So once you've formatted your Word-based document template, then you want to move to step two, which is to go inside of your DocuSign app launcher, and then you want to go to the gen template. Here, I've already got a template, so I'm going to edit this current template. But if you want to create a new template, give a name to your template. So new template, then you can also choose your data source where your button will be placed. So in my case, I want to use the opportunity again. And then Jen asks you if you want to create the document instead of the DocuSign document creator, or do you want to do it in Microsoft Word? I strongly recommend that you do Microsoft Word because you have many more formatting options. And then from here, this is where you'll be able to add the fields that you want to add to your document. And so I'm not going to go ahead with this specific template because as I said, I've already built the previous one. So once you've created your template, here is where you can add your field inside of your Word document. And so there are two kinds of fields that we want to add. There's Salesforce fields that we want to add to our document. And there's also DocuSign fields is going to indicate where signers are going to have to sign on the document. We'll start with Salesforce field. So actually, as I was doing this demo, I've realized that the proposal date was static. As you can see in a template, we shouldn't have an actual date. We should only have a placeholder. So what I want to do here is I want to automatically merge the date when I send the proposal. I'm going to select today's date. And then here I'm getting a code that I can copy to replace what was here. And you do this for all the fields. And so what's great about DocGen is that when you click add, you can actually choose other objects which are not just opportunity related, but you don't have to create those formula fields and lookup fields all the time. Here, for example, I've also wanted to have my opportunity line items. So I've added an opportunity product line item and I've copied this and I've pasted it here. And this is going to be a table row, as you can see, DocGen is smart enough to understand that I want to repeat the number of rows depending on the number of line items. And then from within my product, I also wanted to get the 
product quantity. And so I've copied my quantity, pasted it here, my unit price, and I copied it from here, pasted it here, and my total price for that line item, and I've pasted it here. For my opportunity amount, I just got my amount field from the opportunity, pasted it here. And then once you're done with the Salesforce fields, what you want to do is to add your DocuSign fields. And so in this example, I have two signers, the client and myself, the sender. And so I've just added two signers. I can add a third one here, and then you can decide what fields you want to add. Is it a signature field, initial field, company field, a title field or name field? You just add all the fields that you want. And same thing, you copy this and you paste it in the relevant area then we can save our template and i'm going to save this as v22 it's very important to have a naming convention system so that you can keep track your what you're doing in your templates and so here i'm going to upload v22 if i want to have some documents only included in certain conditions i can do that too here, I'm not going to show you this in this demo because it would make it very, very long. But what's great is that I can preview my document. And so I can choose an opportunity. We were working with Burlington. And normally what should be different is that we should see today's date. And yes, September 19th, 2024. And the document looks great. That's fine. I can go back to my DocuSign DocGen template. And then the final step will be to place the button and then once the document has been generated we need to decide what happens to this document and so in this example i'm mapping this doc gen template to a docusign envelope template which i've called proposal envelope template and so in this envelope template it's purely the routing order and salesforce understanding where to pull the client name and client email address and my name and my email address in order to send the document. Now let me do an actual demo so that you understand exactly how this works. Let's just say that we're gonna add 10 DocuSign trainings. I'm gonna save. The opportunity amount has obviously changed as well. And now I can click on my send proposal, which is the custom button that's coming from my doc gen template. Now the doc gen template is generating the document as I'm speaking. And then the next step will be for me to click on send for signature. So I'm gonna click on send for signature. My document has been uploaded. My recipients have been pre-mapped using the DocuSign envelope template. And then the only thing that I have to do really is to click on prepare and send so that I can review that the document was generated correctly and that my fields are also added correctly for my signers. So that's what I'm going to do now. My document looks good and it also has the field. Actually, I did forget to add the placeholders for the title and the date signed but that's okay for the purpose of this demo. I'm gonna click on send and that's it. This is how DocGen for DocuSign works. However, if none of these two options are working for you, you might need to consider a custom integration. And a custom integration could be built either with code or no code. If you want to build something very quickly, then no code is probably the way to go. We often build things for our customers using make.com or using Power Automate, or sometimes even Zapier. It really depends on what tech stack the clients are already using. But these two platforms will allow you to connect DocuSign with Salesforce in a way that helps you accomplish any workflows that the native DocuSign for Salesforce integrations don't support. Again, if you need help with your DocuSign for Salesforce implementation, don't hesitate to book a strategy session with us using the link just down below. During the call, we'll map out your document workflow process and suggest the best implementation roadmap for your unique needs. I will see you in the next video. And until then, happy signing. Ciao.